Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. I thought today that we'd go over how to make the cowl capelet. It's posted on Etsy. There will be a link below for the pattern. Uh, just to explain how to work with chenille, because it's a very beautiful, it's so soft. It's like butter. If you know anything about chenille. Chenille is basically nothing more than a thread that has fluff attached to it. That's all that it is. This is weaving chenille. And this is three millimeter. It does get thinner. <laughs> it does. So if you're used to chunky, um, please keep this in mind. That how you hold things, how it will feel will be completely different. Uh, this is one of those cone yarns. I thought this, I thought based on general weight and volume, because I'm used to balls have a lot of air in them, that it would make half as much as it did. I thought, okay, I'll just make a cowl and there might be leftovers. I made two cowls and now I have leftovers for a headband. <laughs> Go figure, right? But yes, today we'll be learning how to make the beautiful, beautiful cowl with the capelet with the diagonal striping to it. I do have something of a sample started, so it won't be exact, but you'll get the drift. It's not a hard pattern at all. Uh, as long as you use your markers so that you know where you begin and where you end, that's all that really matters. And learn how to count. I know that sounds a little bit odd to say. But when you have black chenille, sometimes the only way to count is to hold it up to the light. <laughs> Otherwise, you can't see it. It's, it's black. It's like trying to, can you count? <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. So, yes. And now, on to the tutorial. Okay. To start your project, crochet or chain 160 stitches to make the neck for your cowl. Uh, if you want it bigger, make it bigger. If you want it smaller, I don't suggest it. But do what works for you and don't mind that it... If it feels a little bit tight, you will be adding easement to it. And when you add stitches to it, it should loosen it up a little bit. So chain 160 and then chain 3 up so that you can immediately start doing the double crochet. And when you do the double crochet... It'll give it some width so that when you connect it later on in the circle, you can tell if it's flat. You can tell if there's any twist in it. Because if you just connect a chain, that's a headache you don't need. <laughs> you really, really don't. Especially when everything is this small. Um, just to also go over the size hook, this is a US G6 4mm. I like the Susan Bates. I like how the hook grabs. You can see that there. But yeah, you chain your 164, chain 3 to turn it, make your band, and then connect the band. And then all you have to do is double crochet for your first six rows. And at this point, because this is chenille, to be able to count six rows, because you'll have this big wide band, you're like, what is it? Uh, either stick the line in every time and do it that way, or... I use safety pins and you just, each row is a safety pin and then you just know. So you have this band, it'll be, yours will be 160 around, six rows long. So rows 7 through 29 will be your, uh, what I call the one chain. Let me just finish this row, we'll go up one. That's just when you make your striping. That's just the solid part. It just It's a pattern, and the chenille, it should be pure polyester, at least mine is. It can be cotton, but I believe this is polyester. I don't care very much for the cotton version. No offense to cotton, but that's not the best version of cotton. Now, if you know double crochet, this should not be difficult. Other than just trying to identify the stitches, it really is about going by feel. It just if it goes in, just try to find the V if you can. Make sure it goes under both 
for the V, if you know what I mean, both lines that you can't really see. Believe it or not, there is two in there. That is two. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Just crocheted three. It's all double crochet. Chain one. Skip the stitch. If you can find it. There's no increasing or decreasing. It's just three double crochet, chain one. That's all it is. For rows seven through 29. <laughs> so a lot of safety pins to keep track of there. And as you can see, there is your last big hole. We chain one, we skip a stitch if you can find it, then you go to the next one. You'll get really used to this pattern. Because it's just this on top of this for the next 18 rows, <laughs> essentially. So one, two, three, chain one, skip one. You know, for a thin yarn, it does knit up quite warm. Okay. Just be real careful not to make anything too tight. And if you're worried about the pattern, like, it should work out to where you should only have the right amount of three groups. It should, but if you don't have enough space, like with this example, I'd have to put, like, an extra one here. Just make the stitches work. Whether you have to increase, decrease, whatever, make it work. Because the only thing you're really going for is, like, this is, for this example, I'm making this one work. I'm just skipping over one, like chain four. Do whatever you have to to keep the three on top of three chain one. But since it'll be in a circle... It'll be, once you get it started, it'll be the same forever. Just make sure it goes through both loops. It's really good about not going through both. Let's see, one, two, yeah. Sometimes when you do that one extra chain, it makes the top part of the double crochet tighter than it needs to be. Or at least that's just my issue. <laughs> chain one. Sometimes this can get hard. You gotta really push them in. That's why it's so important to try to keep your gauge consistent. Even if you can't see it. <laughs> but it really is soft. It's like butter through your fingers. It's more of a sensory project than anything. And when you're done, you're left with a velvety soft neck warmer. I just go through that one at the end. One, two, three. Plus crochet really eats up thin yarn real easy. Once you've done those rows and you're starting row 30. Now here's what it means to increase in one of every group of three. Here we have a group of three. Because we see we have a whole... That's your group of three. 
just pick a spot somewhere in the group and put in one stitch like extra just do a double usually do mine in the middle because it keeps it more uniform because it's black it just hides it better so you one two three One, two, three. Yeah, I always make that last one tighter than I need to. And chain one. Here we went from three to four. And we will do the same exact thing in the next group. We will add one additional stitch. And that's how you get a fan out pattern for the shoulder parts of the cowl and then they were staggered enough so that it doesn't bunch up on you or doesn't turn into a ruffle or it does what it's supposed to it lays flat Just remember that if you push too hard with chenille, it can break because it's just like sewing thread with fuzz on it. That's all that it is. All chenille is like that. So just always keep it in mind. So I said three to four. It's very gradual. And it's just gradual easements that make things so much prettier more useful and look like a professional done it Two, three, four. Yep. And that's how we start that one. Let's go three to four. The slots stay in the same spots. And that's how you get the striping. Uh, let's see here. And then the next row, you'll just do the same four, no increasing. And then row five, you do the same thing. So there'll be five in each line and you keep the holes where they're supposed to be. And then just follow it accordingly. And then the last two rows is just double crochet and you get up to six and then it flares out. At that point, you're basically done. Just connect it. Um, single crochet into the ends, cut off your string, and sew it all up. The only sewing should be the ends, your yarn ends. <laughs> That's it. And then it'll be a very beautiful piece of fabric. Let's see here. I will try to show you. Here's the bottom. This is the bottom. It should look exactly like that. And it's very, very floppy. That's what chenille is. So, good luck. Leave comments if you have questions. The pattern will be on Etsy. And there is your finished product. There's all your solid, there's your striping, and my favorite part of all, <laughs> putting on my own label. <laughs>